Sean George here. In the previous videos, we created a procedural two-dimensional checkerboard pattern, and then we moved from two-dimensional UV space into three-dimensional UV space. Now, in this video, we're going to move our 2D checkerboard pattern into 3D space. Now, I already have our project open from the previous video. If you want to, you can start a new one, although you're going to need to copy over some of the code that you would have already done in the prior video to make this work. We're actually going to take the create checkerboard 2D method and extend it to now encompass three-dimensional textures. So go ahead and double click on your script to open it up and let's take a look inside. Now the first thing we're going to do is scroll on down and find our create checkerboard method. We're going to go ahead and copy that. So control C and control V. We're going to call this create checkerboard 3D. Now, obviously, when we're dealing with three dimensions as opposed to two, we're now going to have to go from just X and Y to X, Y, and Z. So our for loop is going to have to be extended to deal with that as well. So let's go ahead and create a four int z is equal to zero. Z is less than texture dot. And this is where we have a problem because right now our texture is just a two dimensional texture. We need to take this and convert it over into a three dimensional texture. For right now, if you want to, you can just change texture over to texture 3D or you, we can create a whole separate one. So let's do uh, texture 3D, texture 3D. I'm gonna copy that. We need to come down and actually create this texture. So under texture, let's go ahead and do texture is equal to a new texture 3D. Once again, now we're gonna to have to specify our width, height, and depth. So 256 by 256 by 256 is what I'm gonna pick. Now, just like before, we're gonna pick a texture format of RGBA32. And next up is whether or not we want mit maps. And in my case, I'm gonna say yes. Let's go ahead and create them. And that's it for creating our texture. We named this wrong. Let's do texture 3D. There we are. Let's go ahead and set up our wrap mode and our filter mode for this as well. So texture 3D, we're just gonna copy these lines for wrap mode of clamp and filter mode of point and change these to texture 3D instead. Scrolling on down now, instead of calling create checkerboard, we're gonna call create checkerboard 3D. So let's go ahead and make that change really fast. And then in here, now we have int z is equal to zero, z is less than texture dot, and we should now have a depth variable, texture 3D dot depth, there we are. And of course, these textures now need to be texture 3Ds instead. So we're gonna swap them over to texture 3Ds. And of course, texture dot set pixel, this is going to have to change. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how that's gonna change in a little bit. Let's go ahead and put our curly braces in. And let's also add Z++. So now we have the ability to iterate over every single pixel in our three-dimensional texture. But we do need to change how we evaluate the, the checkerboard pixel. It's not gonna be the same as what we had here. If we actually do this, we're not gonna get anything different than the standard checkerboard and the Z value won't be changing or varying in any way. So let's go ahead and take our color evaluate checkerboard pixel function and duplicate that. And instead it's evaluate checkerboard 3D pixel. Make sure we copy that name and exchange it for the one that we're iterating over right here. Now there is a big difference between how we're gonna handle putting pixel values into a texture 3D versus a texture 2D. With a texture 2D, we were allowed to call set pixel if we wanted to. However, with a 3D texture, there is no set pixel method. Instead, you are going to need to pass in an array of all of the pixel values, that is all the color values, in one shot using set pixels. In addition, due to performance reasons, Unity documentation actually recommends that you don't use the color type, but instead you use the color 32 type, which basically the, the main difference here is the fact that a color 32 holds four bytes, and inside of each byte, each one is zero to 255 in value, instead of the typical zero to one range you were working with earlier in this video series. So we're not going to have this set pixel actually occur here, so let's go ahead and comment that out for right now. Let's go back to our evaluate part and get this working first before we mess with anything else. So here we calculate the value X and the value Y. Once again, we're gonna do the exact same thing again, except it's going to be for Z. So float value Z instead. So anywhere there's a Y, switch it with a Z value. There we are, there we are, and Z, and Z, and Z. Perfect. This method has to be updated to also include passing in the Z value and Inside of the loop, we also need to pass in the Z value as well. 
Now that we have the Z value, we need to figure out how we're going to use it. Now you might be inclined to just do something like this, VX equals VY, and you know what, you know that equality thing worked pretty well. Why don't we just do and, and, you know, what if VY is equal to VZ as well? And if you do this, you're gonna quickly notice that it doesn't work properly. The reason is because this is not alternating back and forth. Remember, one of the key things about VX is equal to VY is that we get an alternating pattern of black and white continually, and then on the next row, we get the opposite pattern occurring. We want the same thing to happen here, but now along the Z axis. And to make that happen, we're actually going to need to do another conditional check, but not right here. We need to do it within the conditional itself, both if it's equal to and if it's not equal to. So we're gonna add an else statement here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see whether or not VZ is equal to whatever value we want it to be opposite of. So if our value here is zero right now, and if VX is equal to VY, okay, that's fine. Now what I wanna do is check to see if VZ is equal to one in this case, the opposite value that you have here. And if that is true, then what I'm going to do is set v the value equal to one. I wanna do the opposite check down here. So if we end up to the, with this else statement, we're an alternate one. So I'm gonna do a if VZ is equal to zero in this case, value is gonna be equal to one. So hopefully you kind of see what's going on here. If they're equal, that's great, okay. Now if VZ is equal to one in this case, we're gonna swap that value over so it goes from a zero to a one. And in this case, if VZ is equal to zero, we're gonna swap it over to a one right here. Now there is one issue. If you remember, I said we need to work with color 32s instead of colors. In addition, color 32s work with byte values, not with float values. So let's make a few changes. The first one is the fact that float value needs to be turned to byte value instead. And our range is from zero to 255, where zero is black and 255 is white. So let's go ahead and make some changes. So this should be 255, and this should also be 255. Now we come down here and we re return a new color. However, this needs to be a color 32. And we, once again, just place our values in there. And the last one can't be a float. It also needs to be 255, indicating a fully opaque object. All right, now that we have evaluated the 3D pixel, let's go back up where we iterate over all of these and figure out what we're gonna do with it. Now, like I mentioned, we don't have set pixel anymore. Instead, we have set pixels. And that expects an array of information that comes in with every single color value that we're actually working with. So now we can't just index into X, Y, Z. We actually need to come up with a one-dimensional index for a three-dimensional texture. So first, let's just create that color array. So we're gonna do color 32 colors is equal to a new colors. And we're gonna take the texture third, uh, 3D dot width. We're gonna multiply that by texture 3D dot height. And then we're gonna multiply that finally by texture 3D dot depth. And that will be the correct size for every single element that we need to store inside of this object. And once again, that's not color space, that's color 32. And again, this is returning to us a color 32 as well. So make sure you change that type over. And now we need to figure out in this one dimensional array where we stick this value. So what we have is our Z value, our Y value, and our X value. And if we think about this for a second, when X is equal to zero, we're gonna iterate over zero, one, two, three, four, five, went all the way up to nine, and then we roll over and then the Y increases by one. Now, how many values further in a one dimensional array are we? Well, we're Y times the width of that into it, plus whatever X value we happen to be on. And then the same thing happens for Z again. So let's create our index. So int current index, is going to be equal to our x value, whatever we are in the x, plus texture 3D dot width. Now this is going to be times our y value. And then we're also going to say our texture 3D dot width times our texture 3D dot height times our z value is how far in then we are in the z part. So we can get rid of this line right here. And right before apply, we're going to do texture 3D dot set pixels, and that's set pixels 32. And we're gonna pass in our color array, so just type in colors. 
And that's it. Now the last thing we need to do is make sure that we apply this material to the texture. We haven't done that yet. In fact, if we come on up here, you'll notice that we're still applying right here material that set texture, uh, main text underscore texture. And really, since we're kind of having two different ways to make this work, I should take this line and stick it inside of the standard create checkerboard area. So we're going to set it there at the end of create checkerboard, and we're going to do the same thing in create checkerboard 3D. So we'll do material dot set texture, and it's going to be the main text again, and we're going to pass in our texture 3D. Perfect. Okay. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, great. We made a checkerboard texture that's three-dimensional. We passed in all the values. We've applied it. Actually, we did make one mistake. This needs to be texture 3D. There we go. It should work just fine, right? Well, let's go over and take a look at what just fine actually means. I want to hit run. And what you're going to notice after you run this is here. Error assigning 3D texture to 2D texture property underscore main text. Dimensions must match. So what does this mean? Well, what kind of shader are we using? We're using the default shader, and that shader is a standard shader. And if we go over to the gear and select, select shader, what you're going to notice is that main text is actually of type 2D. We're not working with 2D textures anymore. This needs to be of type 3D. So let's take a look really quick. I'm going to click on assets, right click create, and let's go to shader, surface shader. And let's call this uh, checkerboard 3D, or actually let's just call this um, texture 3D. And let's double click this really quick and take a look inside. And what we're gonna notice here are a few things. One, our main text has been declared as a 2D. So you might be thinking, okay, why don't we just change that to 3D? Oh, but here's the problem. We're using a standard shader, which means there's a lot of work being done by Unity in the foreground, in the background, and we get this little spot in here for our surface shader to set stuff up. Because this shader isn't a fully custom shader with a vertex and a fragment section that we create ourselves, we're relying on whatever Unity has put together for us. And one of those things is the input structure right here. There's only a set number of inputs that we're allowed to actually pass in. And unfortunately, none of those inputs are of type float three for our UV coordinates. Therefore, we're gonna stop right here. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to write your own shader, both the vertex and fragment parts that are going to allow you to render out this three-dimensional texture. So anyway, I know we kind of left on a cliffhanger there, but I hope you learned something new and I'll see you next time. So long everyone and goodbye.